Hi folks, so this is just going to be a short video on biometrics. Uh, and biometrics is essentially where you measure physical characteristics of someone um, or the behavior of someone and try and identify whether or not it's the person. Um, and so you can use it to like identify someone and or to do authentication on that person. So to say, well, you look like you're such and such. Or it might be like, oh, you say you're that person, but prove it uh, is the distinction there. So some um, examples would be voice recognition. So whether you sound like the person, hand geometry, um, fingerprints, uh, retina matching, gait, so that's the, the your, your strides and your walking, like how how you um, how you walk, key keystroke dynamics, so that's like when you're typing away at a computer, do you pause between certain letters, does it take you longer to do you know um, double letters or um, you know what what are the patterns that you use when you're typing and you could use that. Uh, face recognition, obviously, handwriting, DNA sampling. Um, so, and all of these are an example of something that the user is in terms of, uh, you know, authentication factors. So, in terms of fingerprints, you can um, do it by scanning in uh, like an image. So you can use an optical fingerprint reader. You can use capacitive techniques and use the differences in electrical charges um, to also detect details on the surface. You can use ultrasonic sensors. Uh, and the kinds of details that you're looking for on a fingerprint are uh, like the types and locations of patterns and the immunity features where ridges end or bifurc bifurcate. Um, and typically the details get reduced to a graph uh, so that it can be stored and compared later. So if you look at your own fingerprint, uh, you can see you'll be one of these three types of uh, general uh, fingerprints. Uh, you'll either be an arch, a loop, or a whirl. Um, I am a loop. Um, have loop fingerprints, but you can look at your fingerprints and um, you'll be one of those, but also, you know, the things that are, that differentiate fingerprints are, you know, where the features like end and, um, and connect. So, so what the advantages of biometrics is that it reduces cognitive loading compared to passwords. So, you know, it's easier to walk up to a device and put your finger on something than it is to type your password into it. Um, you can't lend, forget, lose, or steal biometrics, or at least not easily. Um, so you can you can use it to both identify and authenticate. So for example, just work up to a device and touch your finger on it, um, and it might say, "Oh, okay, it looks like you're that person," and you can come, you can get straight in. But it's more secure to actually just use it for authentication, because there there are um, going to be false positives and false negatives with biometrics. You will have people that have similar fingerprints, for example, and if you have a like a not a very good read of a fingerprint then um, you've got a better chance of keeping things secure if you ask who they are before you then look check whether or not they match it. Um, under certain conditions it can be hard to forge biometrics uh, if you're doing biometrics well. And they can enable continuous authentication. So for example the keystroke or you know or behavior based um, biometrics you can basically leave them logged in until they suddenly start typing differently than you would expect them to, and then you might prompt them to re-authenticate, for example. But the disadvantages of biometrics is that a lot of the features that you're using to authenticate people is essentially public or quite easy to get. So your fingerprints, for example, you're leaving them all over the place all the time without thinking about it. Um, when you go to the kitchen and have a sip of water from your um, glass, you know, you've left your fingerprints all over that. Um, 
So someone who really wants access to something, if the thing that's protecting it is just your fingerprints, then uh, you know that information could be uh, readily got. There are examples of people even getting fingerprints from photographs of people. People, if you use a high enough um, quality camera, uh, you can basically zoom in and, and steal someone's fingerprints from a distance. Obviously, the face. If you're using facial recognition, you all the information about that person's face is all over, but you're walking around with that public all the time. Um, so, you know, if, you, if it's just you need to look like the person, then um, well, you that's like a problem if you're just walking around showing you ever on your face, and if that's the only way that you're authenticating yourself, that could be a problem. Um, I, um, for example, a lot of the facial recognition um, authentication you can break with a photograph. You literally can hold a photograph up to the camera and that could be enough to basically log you in. Um, and we'll come back to that. So the other thing you need to think about is replay attacks. So there's no way to revoke or change physically or digitally acquired copies. Once you've lost your fingerprint, you can't really use it again, can you? Uh, as soon as that information is, is out there, you can't reliably make use of it as your authentication um, system. Uh, obviously the transmission between the device and the system needs to be tamper-proof, so you can't wiretap um, and replay the digital events of, of actually logging in, for example, with a fingerprint scanner. Um, and it can take a number of repeated readings to actually store or validate the information um, with fingerprints, for example. Usually the software will get you to do it like a whole bunch of times to try and build up the initial graph of like what your fingerprint should look like. And then when you try and log in, it will often actually not work the first time. You might actually have to touch it a few times for it to be convinced that you are you. So the, the accuracy is often like relatively high, but it's not perfect. You've got false negatives. So um, it won't, where it doesn't actually accept a valid user. And you've got false positives where it authenticates someone as the wrong user. So for example, um, my um, six-year-old daughter can um, log into my wife's smartphone that has a fingerprint recognition thing because that gets close enough to fool uh, the fingerprint recognition on the um, on the smartphone. Um, the intrusiveness um, can be an issue in terms of privacy uh, and you know once you've got a record of that if it gets um, stolen uh, you could could be considered sensitive in some some cases. There, I said that um, it can't be stolen, but actually there is a risk of harm to users because people have literally had their fingers literally stolen or cut off in order to use a biometric, um, like fingerprint reader, for example. And uh, biometrics can be expensive compared to all the other like purely digital things that you can do or the, the cheaper ways that you can authenticate someone. Doing biometrics is usually like kind of difficult, it's kind of expensive. If you need someone to read their fingerprint, you've got the hardware that needs to be attached to the machine um, instead of, you know, for example, a token that is just a cheap thing that someone can walk around with. So the read devices can often be fooled as well. So think about things like Mission Impossible or the Mission Impossible movies. There's usually examples of that in most of them. Um, there's something that is actually a real attack that's published by um, security researchers, but it's called the gummy bear attack because the capacitive resistance of a gummy bear is essentially the same as a human hand. So if you have a gummy bear and you put a fingerprint onto it, then you, you stick it on the end of your finger or whatever, you can basically, um, you know, fool uh, fingerprint readers that use the um, the resistance to like to to to, um, to read a fingerprint, um, and I've said before, photographs can fool a lot of webcam-based face recognition, and so for those reasons, they usually to, nowadays, if you're going to use biometrics, you need to think about liveness detection, so how you actually detect that it's not a static photograph, for example. So it might be that you literally have to have someone a security guard that stands there and checks that you're not doing any shenanigans 
Um, again, if you're being sneaky, and again, if you watch it in the Mission Impossible movies, you can see ways that they get around that by having very um, clever, you know, disguises or whatever. Um, but um, you also have devices that have features that detect things like they might ask you to like turn your head to the side, turn your head, like do something that makes it convince you that that convince it that you're alive. But again, security researchers have done things like um, at Usenix Security a couple of years ago did a 3D model of a person, basically put the photograph on that and use that to turn their head so they could get fuller. Um, and literally, you, some of those things you can fool just by holding the photograph up and moving the photograph around. So, you know, that there's a lot of weaknesses with um, biometrics. Um, they, I think, my personal opinion um, is that biometrics have this kind of cool factor that people fall, fall for. Um, and it seems like it's really advanced and, and clever and therefore good. Um, and they do provide, or they do provide something in terms of security, but you should use them as part of multi-factor authentication. You should use them as authentication and not both identity and authentication at the same time. Um, and you should seriously consider what the other options are, because there is probably other options that are provide a similar level of security for a lot less hassle. Um, so that's biometrics.